I know that many of you are still hesitating which camera to buy, whether the DJI Action 3 or the GoPro Hero 11 Black. I received many messages on Instagram as well as on Facebook. I received many comments on my YouTube videos asking me about uh, some precisions about these cameras. So let's dive into today's topics and talk about that. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. I was planning to do a video dedicated to the DJI Mini 3 Pro, my thoughts about it after several months of using it, but September was very tough. The DJI Action 3 came out at the same day of the GoPro Hero 11 Black and I couldn't stay away of this so I bought these two cameras, I tested them and now in this video I'm gonna talk a little bit about my thoughts about these two cameras and which one to buy and which one I prefer, so stay tuned till the end. By the way go ahead subscribe and like under this video and ring the bell so you will receive all the notifications about my future posts and videos. Let us start with the price. On the launch day the DJI Action 3 offered the camera with 3 batteries and their external charger and some accessories for about 460 euros. While the GoPro Hero 11 Black was about 450 euros, only the camera and one battery if you take the GoPro subscription. But we know that we won't use a camera with only one battery, right? Apparently GoPro has noticed that they are not selling very well comparing to the DJI Action 3 camera. So in order to stay in the competition, now they offer a camera with two enduro batteries and some accessories for about 450 euros if you get the GoPro subscription. So it's equivalent to the DJI offer, while on the DJI we have three batteries and the charger. Even if they are action cams and they are dedicated to be used in action activities and sport activities outdoors, but with the front screen that they have, we can use them also as vlogging cam. So you can check this link where I compare the GoPro Hero 11 Black to the DJI Action 3 and the DJI Osmo Action, the first version, and the Sony ZV-1. So you can tell me what you think about this video in this link here. So the question is, which one to choose, which one to keep? For me, I will keep the... Stay tuned till the end of this video, I will tell you which camera I will keep and which camera I prefer. To be honest, both cameras can deliver awesome video quality. Both cameras have their pros and cons of course, but both cameras are really great. I was a bit afraid about the GoPro Hero 11 Black, about the heating and the freezes that I can get on the GoPro Hero 11 Black, since I had the GoPro Hero 9 and the GoPro Hero 10 and I had lots of issues with them, but I didn't get any issue of this camera till now. So that's a good point for GoPro, they are really working hard on this issue. Concerning the touchable front screen on the DJI Action 3, it's a nice feature to have, but to be honest, I will not use it much. I use it only to swipe between front and back screen, while on the DJI Osmo Action, the first version, we can use the quick switch button to use this feature to swipe between front and back screen. It's a nice feature to have on the DJI Action 3. We can swipe the menus, but to be honest, I will not be using it to the fully. The menus on the DJI Action 3 and the GoPro Hero 11 Black are really great. They are easy to use and easy to configure. According to my experience, I prefer the one on the DJI. I believe it's smoother, more responsive and quick and fun to use. So uh, DJI are working really hard on the user experience. So I can give a point for the DJI comparing it to the GoPro Hero 11 Black. But that doesn't mean that the GoPro is not that good. But I prefer, it's a preference, I prefer the one on the DJI. DJI has now the magnetic mount which is a nice feature to have and I really love it. You can easily take it out from one mount and put it on another mount. So it's easy to configure and to set up comparing to the GoPro where you have to unscrew it first and then screw it again on the second mount so it will take more time to set up your shot. It's a very nice feature from DJI and I really love it. Though we have to keep some of these mounts in our backpack when we are going to do some videos. I believe that one day I will go on location and I will find out that I don't have any of these mounts. I will forget them at home. So be aware of this issue. Let's talk a little bit about the image quality of these two cameras even if both are great cameras. But on a bright day, in automatic mode, I believe that the GoPro performs better than the DJI. The dynamic range looks wider, the colors are more vibrant, and the overall feel is great. As for today, GoPro offers 10-bit colors in the videos, which leads to over 1 billion color, while on the DJI we have only the 8-bit color, which leads to about 16 million colors, uh, much less than the GoPro. But DJI announced that on a future update we will have the 10-bit color, so they are keeping the competition very hard between these two cameras. On social media platforms, on YouTube and small screens, do we need 10-bit colors? I don't believe so. For me, the 8-bit colors are more than enough, even if the 10-bit colors can give us more room to work on color grading. But do we need to color grade our videos when we do some action shots with these small cameras? Again, I don't believe so. 
By the way, the DJI Action 3 as well as the GoPro, they have flat profiles. On the DJI, it's called DCNA like On the GoPro, it's called flat profile. If we color grade correctly the rushes from the DJI on this in the like we can achieve the vibrant look of the GoPro so they will be more or less equivalent but again we need to pass time doing and color grading our rushes from these action cameras let me know in the comment section below what do you think I noticed that even in automatic mode in low light DJI performs better than the GoPro even if it has 8-bit colors comparing to 10-bit colors well it's all about physics here DJI has a bigger sensor here, 1 over 1 7 inches diagonally on a 4x3 format sensor while on the GoPro we have 1 over 1 9 inches on a diagonal of 8x7 sensor that means that in 16x9 ratio the sensor of the DJI is even bigger than the one of the GoPro, right? Let's be honest about this, the DJI and the GoPro aren't made for low light even if the sensor on the DJI is slightly bigger achieving a better image quality but we cannot get crisp images and crisp footages at low light situations GoPro offers some night shots mode such as star trails, light painting and car trails mode but for me those are unnecessary options, I will not use them much, I will not use them at all probably I prefer to use for night sky photography some wide lenses with a bigger aperture which, which leads to better image quality so those are really unnecessary, if you want to use them guys it's up to you, I will not use them GoPro has integrated in this camera the 8x7 inches sensor which allows you to shoot first and then reframe for all your social media platforms whether vertical shots or horizontal shots as you want you can reframe later and shoot first which is a nice feature to have for the DJI they are still on the old side you have to flip the camera vertically in order to shoot vertical shots with that being said, the vertical shot on the DJI can preserve all the quality, all the resolution of the sensor while on the GoPro you have to crop in so you have a smaller size, smaller resolution of the final footages but do you really need the full resolution clip on a vertical format for your social media platform? that's up to you GoPro offers 360 horizon lock at 4K while on the DJI we have only horizon balancing at 45 degrees at 4K which is more than enough for me if we are vlogging, if we are walking, hiking or something like that if we go down to 2.7k or 1080 we can achieve the 360 horizon balancing horizon study that we called on the DJI which is an amazing feature also to have for FPV drones I will be using the horizon lock only when I'm doing some portraits to film some behind the scenes, some backstages so the 2.7k or the 1080p are more than enough in order to do some reels and some shorts for YouTube so I'm really satisfied with lower resolution in order to have uh, smaller files because a photo shoot can last from one hour to two or three hours so I don't need bigger files to work on afterwards the stabilization of these cameras are really great even at higher frame rates for slow motion so these cameras can be really good for vloggers they don't need any more uh, gimbals people can do more videos, can create more, can be more creative also whether on YouTube or on other platforms both companies worked really hard on the batteries now they are really great in this video that you can watch here I was using the Sony ZV-1 the DJI Osmo Action the first version as well as these new cameras the Sony ZV-1 was exhausted the first then the DJI Osmo Action the first version while at the end of the shooting the GoPro Hero 11 Black was about 20% of the battery and the DJI about 32% that's really massive I shot more than an hour with these two cameras and they weren't out of batteries so really it's a good point for these two cameras let's talk a little bit about the audio quality of these cameras you noticed in my previous video in automatic mode both cameras sound really good the audio might clip sometimes according to the wind direction and the wind speed which is really acceptable for these two cameras even if they have the wind reduction mode on on these two cameras it's really acceptable for me uh, the DJI has a front directional mic which is really helpful for vloggers I wonder how DJI will improve this audio quality on the Pocket 3 announced in late October or November the most important thing on this audio section is to connect your camera to an external microphone on the GoPro you cannot do it easily you have to pass by the media mode which is about 80 to 90 euros and then you can connect your microphone to it on the DJI if you have the DJI mic for example you can connect it directly to your Action 3 if not, you can buy the TRS cable to TRRS cable for about 10 euros and you can buy also the adapter USB-C to 3.5mm jack 
and then you can work with any microphone personally i use a lavalier or maybe the rode video mic go 2 or maybe also the wireless go from rode that i use it when i'm going to to vlog or doing some videos outside so it's really convenient to have this option you can use your mic and you can only add few cables for maybe 10 or 12 euros and that's done i hope that this video helped you choosing the best camera for you whether the dji action 3 or the gopro hero 11 black let me know in the comment section below which one will be your choice and which one will be yours soon none of these two cameras can replace the sony zv1 that i really love but since i got recently the sony zv e10 on which i will be doing uh, a video a proper video on this channel so if, if you are interested in the sony zv series in sony zv e10 and in vlogging cameras so stay tuned i will be selling so the sony zv1 and replace it with the dji action 3 for the daylight shots for uh, daylight vlogs and some videos it's a matter of budget on the dji you can have the dji three batteries with their charger on the gopro which is a very nice camera a very good camera also you have only the camera with two batteries which is uh, less convenient than the dji action 3 that's it for today's video please hit the subscribe button and like this video and ring the bell so you will receive all the notifications about my future videos and posts by the way you can follow me on my social media platforms on instagram and on facebook till another video have a nice day ciao